you're not telling us something. Yeah. <laughs> so, what did you? How, in what context did you meet him? Did you, I don't know, get caught in a rat trap in his apartment? Oh, okay, let's not be rude. Yeah, let's not. Oh, I mean, was that real? I did, I'm on I your page. I'm sorry. I'm a Cut, we're not trying to put you in a space hey, you don't want to be put in. But we, I mean, this is this seems to be. Something. I wasn't always a rat. <gasps> what? What? I wasn't. I wasn't always a rat. You chose to be a rat. I didn't. From what? Were you like a parrot or a turtle? No, I was a human. <laughs> I was a guy. What? <laughs> what? what? You were what? A, a dude <gasps> named Cuck Rash? That no, is exactly my, what my question exactly. was. Exactly. It's. Who who names their child Cug Rash? My name is not. Were you like a stockbroker? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your name? What your name used to be? My name, my real name, um, is Bruce. Bruce what? what? Bruce what? Cugrich. Okay, I can, Google, I, can I go on Google and <laughs> search Bruce Cugrich? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make an investigate check. This is huge for me. This right is now. crazy. The idea that I'm looking at a rat man that used to be a full man named Bruce. And he's wearing a crown. I got a four. <laughs> is there another Bruce Cuckridge? Um, there's an extremely successful <laughs> movie horse breeder named Bruce Cuckridge. <laughs> movie horse breeder? He breeds horses for movies, like show horses. I show everyone. Oh my god, Wait, he breeds horses. That's why you're good with animals. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah, this all yeah, makes sense. It, it's How do you not, get into that kind of job? No, I got, is it, it has to be your it's parents it's or something. It's got to be a family yeah. problem, right? Horse wow. breeding? Movie horse breeding? Point is, I'm Cug Rash now. And, um, but I, I, I knew this man in Look, my old life. I'm a drug dealer, man. Like, I, it's fine. Just tell us everything about who you used to be and how you knew this guy. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, you know, that part of my life is behind me. I wasn't, I Look, was... Look, darling, we've all had different yeah. lives. I can tell you about, let me tell you about my good friend, John Wilkes Booth. He was a oh. fabulous oh, actor. That's a big Fabulous. Drop. Okay. I don't say I wasn't as bad as John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> if we're all admitting secrets, I wasn't always a firefighter. <laughs> Okay, I, was no way I, I was in high school, and then after high school, I became a firefighter. That's not a secret. That's wow. just a normal life. Ricky, you so, have to live. Is you what you're high saying. school, uh, then firefighter, and then or firefighter. are you leaving something else out? I'm community college for a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, you get a text on your phone, Ricky, from <laughs> Esther. Uh, it says, at Clinton Hill Chantry with Alejandro, we may have found something. Are you with Pete? Uh, and text, that's awesome. Uh, with Pete right now. How are you? Uh, and yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the text back says, if all of you guys are there, you should come here at, at your nearest convenience. You can come tonight if you need to, or tomorrow. Um, I mean, I, I'm I, pretty tired. And I just made this big salad. <laughs> Honestly, I've got so much Rolatini in me. <laughs> I'm worried. Uh, I wonder if it, if we can go tonight or tomorrow, but I, I, I don't know. I feel I have a bad feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of right. do too. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go tonight. Salad and hummus yeah. and rollatini to I'll, go. I'll get the Tupperware. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cool. It's like midnight. Uh, you guys hop on the subway to head all the way. I'm into... hopped up on coke, so <laughs> yeah, I'm good uh, to go. You guys get on the train. You're heading out. Uh, it's a long ride from here to Brooklyn. Can we take a short rest on the train? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You can all take a short oh, rest. I'm yeah, listening bitch. to um, uh, the Prodigy. <laughs> I just keep stealing looks at Cugrass, um, trying to imagine what he looked like as a man, being like, did he have a did he have a big beer? I have an app that can give people sort of makeup and stuff like that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do no, that. No, I, I wasn't. Makeup. He just looked like a smooth tall. ball. No. <laughs> oh my wow. God. He so looked like this. Handsome. Wow. He looked like this. That just looks uh -oh. like a thump. Yeah. Cug, your cheeks are so rosy. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your jawline is so pronounced. Um, wonderful. You guys arrive at the Clinton Hill Chantry. Uh, Ricky, you're very familiar with this space. Uh, you walk up, you see that Frank is there on the front of the door. Um, you see he looks up and goes, Hi there, Ricky Matsui, how's it going, bud? Uh, pretty good, we just went, came from a wedding, it was beautiful. Oh, beautiful, who got hitched? A uh, pigeon and a little fairy. Beautiful, I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> uh, You see, he uh, uh, says, 
Uh, well, I bet you understand that you know, Esther and Alejandro have been working their butts off in there, so, oh, we got a bunch of new friends. Hello, I'm Frank, I'm a gargoyle, I'm only a head, and I'm living on this door forever, so oh that's God. about me. How's it going, wow. Frank? Oh, it's been a while. Misty, it's good to see you. Good to see you, always good to see you, Frank. <sighs> hey, you know, well, you look good, I gotta say. Uh, by the way, I wanted to, I wanted to mention something. You think you could get tickets for me to come see your show? I I, I can't make it because I'm stuck to this door, but I, I just, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you know, I was thinking, I have friends who've been looking for an actor to play the part of Jacob Marley's face in A Christmas Carol, and they've been looking high and low, and I was like, I know somebody who could do that. He's perfect for the part, so I can send your information along to them if you would like. Oh my God! And you would you do that? Absolutely for you, absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, that'd be great, Jacob Marley. I I, <laughs> I wear the chains I uh, forged in life uh, through acts of greed. Absolutely. That sounds like a play. <laughs> uh, Frank is elated. You guys entered in the Clinton Hill Chantry. M a much smaller and less metaphysically intense space. This is sort of just a three-story brownstone that is the same size on the inside okay. that it is on the outside for the most part. Uh, you guys walk in. You see the, the uh, missing glass pane where the questing blade popped out. Uh, you walk into a large library room. This one is library rooms that it's, you know, books lining every Every single wall, and one of those giant tables that, like, could, you know, it's like a study table that could fit like 40 people at it. In the center, these lamps shedding golden light over the table. You see, clearly seeing Alejandro and Esther, they did not sleep last night. Like, they have not been asleep since. They've just been here. Books all over the table everywhere, coffee cups everywhere. You see, Alejandro's flat cap is off. He's like got his shirt rolled up. Esther's the same way. You see that she's got a little thing of coffee in her hand. They both look up. Esther says, great, you're here. You made it. Awesome. Great, great, great. We think we may have found something. Uh, Alejandro looks over and says, and there I beheld him in aspect of a, no, sorry, her. No, no, it. There I beheld it in aspect of a gray child that I had searched for for many long years. This being not the realm and the being, monarch of the sixth borough, the child, the gray orphan, the spirit of the dreaming realm, beyond the streets of the city I had known. So the dream world is the sixth burrow. <clears throat> this gray baby. Sorry, what is it called? This gray baby. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I'm um, sorry, one more time. How many languages do you guys all speak? <laughs> I speak some French. Just English and some Can I just Spanish. admire it and enjoy it? Oh, do, I feel really I'm just bad saying, I, I speak out. five different languages fluently. I have a bit of an accent, but this great baby. Honestly, it's true. I, I hand him a bunch of like, jewel stuff that I grabbed when we were at home. Oh, wow. This one's a cucumber picante. Ooh. It's amazing. You're going to Love it. This is really good. I like, honestly, a lot of the flavors come with cucumber, but I'm into it. Alejandro. What does that gray baby stuff mean? You see that he does a little mage hand thing and replaces the cell and the jewel, puts it in and goes, Alejandro, I hate this. You know I hate this. You know I hate this. You gonna get popcorn lung. Uh, you gonna get popcorn lung, and then what you gonna do about it? You see that he goes up, and you see that, that this uh, he makes a little uh, smoke Empire State Building with a King Kong on it going like this that sort of floats away. That's sick. Amazing. It is sick, isn't it? That's sick. This gray baby is not the gray orphan. This spirit is to the degree that a realm of chaos, such as the realm of dream, can have order. Nod is the spirit of hope and dreams. Nod is sometimes referred to as the monarch of the sixth borough. That you have met Nod is remarkable. Do you remember what the Grey Orphan said to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
the Grey Orphan said a couple of different things. Uh, once they said everyone who ever came here had a dream. Uh, and oh, I, I didn't. I don't know what else they said. What was oh, it, Lazarus? I, I had something. Well, right Lazarus now. said. Esther speaks up and points at Ricky and says. We, by the way, have been combing for Lazarus. The Grey Orphan is never referred to as Lazarus anytime we've been able to find any writings about anything I happening. think they're different, Keep the yeah. words of Lazarus before it's too late. Alejandro sort of twirls his mustache and says, we have not found any reference to a Lazarus in the dreaming. Oh, but Lazarus is in the Bible. Could it be the biblical Lazarus? Uh, you raised, see, from raised from the dead? Raised from the dead. I have a question. Uh, so the dream world is, is referred to as the sixth borough. Is there a time in history, Alejandro or Esther, where the dream world was um, more tangible or more accessible to the other five boroughs? You see that uh, Esther nods and says, the dream world becomes extremely active and tangible in the presence of the arrival of a Vox Phantasma. Also, you can take the L if you go really far. <laughs> but you have to go all the way to the end. Past Canossi, it's long. Okay, I think I went to a curve out there think you can one do it. time. You can't do yeah. that anymore. And I think you can't do that on weekends, right? Yeah, yeah no, or it's nights. like weird, uh, it's a shuttle bus situation. Yeah, you can weekends. get a shuttle bus, but the shuttle bus can only be seen by the pure of heart, so it's a har it's hard. It's a whole deal. But um, they do have great, these tiny little buns. I can't remember the name of them. Anyway. <laughs> It's the worth the trip, but just. Dream bonds. Okay. Mm. So the baby, do we know? You see that, yeah, Alejandro looks over at you and says, the biblical Lazarus is not a bad place to guess. There are beings within the city that would have some knowledge of these things. What would happen if you raise someone from the dead? Would they have a soul? Or would they be in need of a soul? Perhaps a laundered soul? See, Alejandro shrugs and says, it depends on the matter of their raising. If they were raised by infernal or perhaps nefarious means? It is possible to consider this, yes. Kingston, mm. there are some beings in the city that are aware of such biblical things. I do not concern myself as much with religion as I do with the study of the arcane, but I'm trying to think of people in the city that will... Oh, really? Can I show you them? See, he looks at you and says, Willie, really? yeah. the golem. You see, he says, the golem of Williamsburg might yeah. know something. Yes, this is very true. I think it would be wise. Peter, would you be amenable to perhaps going to sleep on the table here and allowing myself and Esther to keep a watch on you with our third eye while you venture into the dreaming? Sure. That might be for the best. Something very strange is afoot. See, uh, Esther looks up and says, I don't think going to Willie is a bad idea. I think that makes sense. Uh, also, um, Bethesda Fountain has been compromised. Oh, yes. We sent the angel down to, to Washington Square Park. So oh, yeah, we have, a, but, uh, I don't know if this is for you guys can do this, but we have a bunch of ashes that we recovered of a human remains. Uh, Esther takes those nods. Um, One of them's cocaine. I made a mistake, <laughs> but we don't know that. Um, uh, yeah, you see, Esther takes them and says, I'll take a look into this. For those of you that uh, need to rest, you should go ahead and rest. Pete, if you want to stay with Alejandro. I think I have to see my brother maybe tomorrow. Did I say I was going to see him tomorrow? You didn't specify a time. Well, I'd like to see him, so I think I'm gonna head back to Staten Island. Cool, you head back to Staten Island, you're staying at the Chantry, what's everybody else doing? I wanna mention something to, I just wanna kinda pull Esther aside for a second and be like, uh, hey, I know this is kinda weird, but uh, do you still see your mom? Do you, uh, do you talk to your mom? What's she up to? How do you know about my mom? Uh, we were friends a long time ago. Is she okay? What is... Make a deception, or, or if you're trying to be deceptive. Uh, I don't have, no, I don't need to be deceptive. Yeah. We we were friends, but we're not, uh, I, we're not friends anymore. You see, she looks at you and says, I haven't seen my mom in a long time. When was the last time you saw her? <sighs> Probably 
probably when I was, I don't know, five, six. Even before that, she was in and out. All right. Uh, I walk up and uh, <laughs> and pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, Esther, I was going to send you this picture from the wedding. Uh, it was crazy. It was beautiful. But uh, and then we had to fight some rats or something. Uh, but this is... Uh, do you, do you guys recognize this guy, this old guy in the picture? Um. I don't recognize him, um, but we can take a look. He was, um, he was hanging out with some vampires and... Hmm. All right. There's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, Ricky, do you want to stay here with me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, awesome. It'd be good to have someone here in case anything goes down because we don't know what's going to happen with Pete. Um, the rest of you guys, uh, it's getting late. You guys did have a full fight against the yeah. uh, Rat King. What are you guys up to? I'm good to go. I can go see Willie right now. Cool. You're going to head to Willie. You're going to Staten Island. Yeah. Uh, Misty and Kugrash, what are you guys up to? Um, yeah, I'm going to go back to uh, my apartment. I'm going to uh, probably call my show's director on the way and be like, look, yes, I know I'm missing rehearsal, but this is... Look, darling, I already know the steps. Do it without me. <laughs> Give the understudy a chance to practice. Uh, and then I'll go to the tunnels. Uh, well, the tunnels. I, but I want to let Cug know if you want to come. Uh, I appreciate know. it. I, yeah, I okay. gotta. I'm, I'm good. All cool. right. Rad, you guys all split up, go back to your various places. What was that? Wisdom saving throw for. It's still late. <laughs> yeah, same. Who rolled poorly on it? I got a one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> on the wisdom? Or like a four and then a one, yeah. Um, let's see who's the closest to where they're headed. Um, well, Ricky, you're just staying here. So Ricky and Pete are staying at the Clinton Hill Chantry. You see that uh, Alejandra says, um, uh, all right, we get a little pillow for you here, uh, Peter, um, and we have some sleepy time tea for you. That's well. great. I was going to ask for tea. That's so great. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> simpatico, huh? All right, here you go. Mm. Uh, and you see, he sa uh, says, now, be lulled into slumber. I pull out Instagram. I'm like, I'm going to be up for another hour and a half. <laughs> you see, he says, he says, no, no, no. Be lulled into when I goes gold, slumber. I have immune to sleep related harm. Would this yeah. be harm? You see that he stays there and nothing happens to you. And he goes, <laughs> okay, this is very embarrassing for me because that always kind of works. This I'm just liking that. everything. <laughs> says, okay, I'm gonna try a little, a little harder. Uh, go to sleep. Um, you see, uh, Esther says, let's leave him yeah. to this. Okay. Um, Esther starts walking around with you in the chantry. Uh, this is sort of, you're spending some like one-on-one -on -one time just with downtime with Esther. What's going on in Ricky's head right now? Just like, just, uh, you know, like this is my shot, kind of. <laughs> just uh, like, she's so cool. I'm just thinking of like, just trying to like sound cool. So I was like, man, there's a lot of books in here. I mean, I like to read too, uh, something about, you know, we have some time in the fire station where I can knock out a book sometimes, so. Uh, she sees she sort of smiles and says, really? Yeah, if you have any recommendations for, uh, I mean, I, I guess I don't read a ton, if I'm being like completely honest. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm open to it. Do you it. want it's one like, of these books, Ricky? Would these, would sure, these what's this one? You? <laughs> uh, you pulled a huge book. It's big. Wow. Um, go ahead and give me an arcana check if you'd be so kind. Uh, uh, what's my arcana? Uh, well, I rolled a three, so probably, <laughs> yeah, three. It is written in a language you do not speak. You have no <laughs> idea what Amazing. this is. Amazing. Wow. Uh, make a, Each make page a, is, the letters are this. <laughs> <laughs> make a persuasion check for me if you'd be so kind. Okay. Uh, 18. 18. Uh, you see that Esther kind of leans against the table and like bites her finger, at, like trying to like stifle. She's like trying not to be mean. She goes, would you like me to uh, walk you through this book that you've shown such That'd a- That'd be awesome, honestly. <sighs> okay, so this is a book of axioms. Do you know what an axiom is? No. So there's different references to it. It means a different thing in philosophy, for example, than it oh. means in arcana. In arcana, an axiom refers to basically a law a rule of magic. Cool. You've opened up to a page which is actually very pertinent for casting magic in New York. It's the imperial axiom. Imperial 
Empire. Empire? Oh. Empire rule. Yeah, the Empire rule. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you see that uh, she's walking along. Um, uh, give me an insight check, by the way. Uh, eight. Uh, eight. Cool. You're kind of going around. A little bit of like a sense of something tingles. Like you're, a little bit of like your divine sense tingles as you're walking through a room. Um, she looks at you and says, she's just kind of like babbling on and being like, uh, she goes like, so the imperial axiom basically states, you see she looks at the book and says, uh, because of the extreme difficulty of creating a permanent magical effect within the tumultuous arcane landscape of New York, an object or enchantment which is abjured or ensorcelled from being crafted, conjured, or created. Yes. Keep going, sorry. No, it's all right. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Object or enchantment, which is abjured or ensorcelled or from being crafted, conjured, or created in a given location, can be crafted, conjured, or created in its abjured locality if it is first crafted, conjured, or created within the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, and that's the imperial axiom, also sometimes known as Sinatra's Law. Oh. Um, so, I didn't understand that, I'm going to be honest, but... Uh, it sounds. It sounded awesome the if, way you said it. If a magical effect or object is barred or or, I'm trying to think. There's lots of things that you can't do in certain places or uh -huh. certain with for certain reasons. They're abjured. They're barred. They're warded. Da, 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 uh, however, because of the imperial axiom, if you are able to create or conjure that magical effect or object within the five boroughs of New York City, you can then conjure, craft, or create it within the place that it is normally barred from being crafted or created. So it's just kind of an interesting law of magic. There's tons of these that we have to learn and know about. It's like a loophole. It's a little loophole, but I mean, this whole library is full of loopholes. Uh, you look up and get a really weird sense. You're looking at a giant map of the Five Bros of New York City, except that the highways on the map are in this sort of pulsing red. Mm -hmm. um, and your divine sense kind of tingles a little bit. Uh, so what's the deal with, with this uh, glowing map? Glowing map? Why don't you, you, you tell me what you think. Give me another Arcana check. Two. <laughs> what do you think it is? Well, so these are the highways, right? Yeah. And they're glowing. So that's, the uh, traffic's really bad right now, it seems like. <laughs> it's bad everywhere. Uh, it's give, me another, give me another persuasion check. Two. Oh. Uh, wait, five? Twenty. Five. Uh, do it with advantage. Change I'll give dice. you a little inspiration here. Okay, 16. <laughs> Uh, you see that she just busts out laughing, and she says, I'm sorry, I'm really not trying not to be an traffic. asshole. Okay. It's not traffic. No, it's not traffic. Oh, I didn't feel are... like it was traffic. No, it's not traffic. That's a good guess. That is actually a good guess. Uh, this is what we, the loose term we have for it is the highway hex. Um, basically, <sighs> Unlike the subways and the bus routes that run basically with the grain of ley lines here in New York, a lot of the highways seem to run against it. And it actually creates kind of the tumultuous arcane effect that we were talking about when we were talking about the imperial axiom. Um, you know, the BQE, uh, the Major Deegan, a lot of these highways end up creating pathways of energies that dilute ley lines, which makes teleporting into and out of New York very difficult. It, it basically makes us a little bit more isolated. So it's like um, interference. That's exactly right. It's like interference. Nice. <laughs> cool. Okay. You see that she says, absolutely. So why, so this is just a map explaining that that exists? Well, we don't understand a lot about it. We don't know. <sighs> We're trying to figure it out as well. You know, a lot of these things, you see she gets sort of a sad look in her face. She says, a lot of these things are sort of like a work in progress. Does it have anything to do with the amount of people going back and forth? That's part of it. Yeah. The traffic actually does a lot of the work of energy because obviously people have an inherent magic in them. Even a person that can't see the unsleeping city still has a heart and a soul. The, you know, Kingston, your friend, gets his magic from real people every day. Mm. Wow. You better, wow. you see, it looks and says, you're like, she says, I've been up for more than a day, so I think I'm gonna hit the hay. Let me show you your place. Awesome, yeah. Uh, she takes you to a little bunk in the chantry. Uh, she says, uh, there should be shampoo and towels and stuff if you need it. Um, let me know if you need anything else. Okay, uh, 
Thanks. And hey, uh, I appreciate the scholarly effort. Thanks, it's really hard for me. <laughs> yeah. she, she, she looks like her heart breaks and she says, I always thought you were a bit of a uh, macho kind of guy and you, I'm grateful that you ran into the fire and saved us all, but that's sort of the kind of thing oh. that guys like you do. No, no offense. Oh, you don't take it. You see, she looks and says, you trying to learn that stuff really is brave, and I'm not downplaying that. Thanks, I um, appreciate that. Then I just take off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an insight check. <laughs> uh, oh, I got an eight. Um, uh, she makes some kind of expression on her face and says, have a good night, Rick, and <laughs> walks away down the hallway. Uh, uh, great, uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna cut over to uh, our man Kingston Brown. Uh, Kingston, uh, it's a short walk actually from here to Williamsburg. Uh, so you walk dead of night, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, What's going on in Kingston's head as he walks to Williamsburg? I think it's just a lot of like sp trying to put the pieces together of like this Bethesda found bullshit, that weird man at that wedding. Man, what's going on? What happened to the New York that I love? I mean, I still love New York, but goddamn, we're doing okay. And then Pete shows up. I mean, he's a good kid, but come on, man. <laughs> Everything seems to be going, who's this great baby? Alejandro's smoking again. Give me an yeah. investigation <laughs> check. Great. Uh, 19. Uh, you know where you need to head. You go down by the waterfront, like Kent. Uh, you're, you can look across the river and see Manhattan. Uh, you're walking up. Uh, you start to walk through this old neighborhood. Uh, it's like southern Williamsburg near the water. Um, it's late at night. There's a lot of families in this neighborhood, so hardly any uh, noise of anything happening. And you begin to hear a lumbering. Uh, you round a corner uh, and you look and see an eight foot tall brick hulking golem. Uh, you see that the golem's eyes glow. And you see that it is digging through pavement for something. Turns around. Eyes glow, looks over at you. What you looking for, Willie? Kingston Brown from up town. Oh, what's going on, man? I see he puts a hand up and <laughs> goes down. <laughs> brings you in for a big hug. Mm -hmm. Says, you look good, Kingston Brown. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You don't look bad yourself. Redder than normal. I says, well, what can I save some rust from being down in the scrapyards? Uh-huh. Uh, there are a couple of trolls that come by to bother. Wouldn't Mishikasi it took all of a week to find them all? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, that's tough, man. But how you doing? You, you living well? You good? I live by the might of gold. I am happy to be animated still. You're looking thin, you eating still these days. I, you know, my mom's trying to get me to eat more, but you know, I mean, just between work and more work and then the city and all this shit, you know, I just, you know, I'm, it's hard to make time. I, uh, you know, I made a salad tonight and I didn't even get to eat all of it because <laughs> I had to come down here. Do you want we should go by a bakery somewhere? I can move. You see that his bricks integrate with a wall next to him? I can move through the wall, grab maybe a bagel, a shmi, or some locks. What do you want? I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, no, uh, no locks, just bagel, schmear. He nods, <laughs> starts lumbering down the street. He says, by the way, there is a nest of d books nearby here. They are spectral, so hard for me to smash them. Uh -huh. You mind to take a look? Yeah, of course. What you, sorry, you're going to have to say that again. You know, sometimes, you know, your br the lack of a tongue and the fact that your mouth is mostly bricks. I have what, I should have a tongue made No, of I'm not saying like you got to have a tongue. I'm not saying you got to have a tongue. Why is you come down here to give me <laughs> really, a Really, I did not tongue. come down here to fight with you about whether or not you have a tongue, all right? <laughs> I can tell you for a fact I, thought I should be so lucky to have a tongue. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, you see, you go down the street, you get to a bakery, you see that he... <laughs> 
melds with the brick wall, disappears for a second, and comes back out. The bricks open up in his chest, and you see a nice toasted everything <laughs> bagel with a schmear on it. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Willie. This looks delicious. Oh, uh, think nothing of it. It's important you have to stay fed. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to say? There are a nest of tea books uh, possessing spirits that are nearby. Would you mind just... Yeah, of course, happy to. Uh, he takes you around the corner. You see for sure there's a hive in an old gutter of a building of just like some very minor undead spirits that are hanging out there. Uh, I'll cast turn undead or destroy undead. Uh, yeah, you raise your hand. Um, uh, what do you say to this nest of divics as you see it? All right. Get out of here, you, <laughs> you divics. <laughs> <laughs> see, they all <laughs> fly away. And don't come back. Kingston, what a mitzvah. I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, of course, man. I'm happy to help. You know, I, you know, I, I wouldn't come down here at 1 a.m. just to say hello. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I love a good bagel, but it's late and I should be sleeping. But I wanted to ask you, uh, what's going on with uh, Lazarus? Lazarus? Yeah. Oh, uh, some... Christian schmuck in the Bible, I think. What mm. should I know for? Well, I mean, it's just, we got something going on. You know that gray baby? Gray baby. You know the gray baby? <laughs> the rib. Why should the baby be gray? Take the baby to the hospital. The baby I, hey, you're talking, to a, you're talking to a nurse, all right? I know, I know what a gray baby is. Why should I know? Baby something? should not be gray. Anyway, there's, you know, you know Nod, right? Lord, yes, I know. I am a creature, of course, of the waking world. Yeah. Well, there's something going down with Nod, and there's this gray baby that just keeps talking on and on about Lazarus. And, you know, uh, me and Alejandro and some of the other people were talking. And we were like, who here knows about this religious stuff? So, we, I, so I thought to come to you. So this something in the dreaming told you about this? What? Lazarus from the Bible. Yes, because, oh, well, the other thing I forgot to mention is, you know Santa Claus, right? Santa Claus got his list stolen, and you know that both Satan and St. Peter have been using that same list, so. Yeah. What a mess. Okay, Willie, we don't need to get into all of this Christian versus Jewish stuff, all right? We got uh, business you said together. it, not me. I okay, uh, uh-huh. All right, well, do you know anything about Lazarus, or is there anything you've heard, any rumblings? Lazarus. Are you sure this is the Lazarus from the Bible? Well, you got another Lazarus I should be looking into? You see, he looks out over the water, beautiful snow across the water of the East River, and looks out at the uh, Statue of Liberty. No, there. And the Lazarus. No, there. Is a woman. There was a woman once, Emma Lazarus. She wrote the poem inscribed in that fine, beautiful woman's book. <sighs> the Statue of Liberty. I'm sorry, Willie. Are you trying to? You trying to get it all with the Statue of Liberty? What a go long time dream. I'm not saying the, I, I just did, we've never talked about ladies before. I just didn't know. What well, do you know? You wise or wouldn't you? Oh, 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 okay. You wanna bring that up? You no, know, you know I'm actually, just saying. You oh, you just saying, all right? Listen, I don't mean to fight. Let's look, you're a man, you come down, you help me with D-Bucks. I'm happy to answer your question. I'm just saying, you tell me that it's not a fetching statue. Okay, if a statue could, I'm, I'm personally not attracted to statues, but sure, that's a beautiful, that could, that's a beautiful. What about Chuck Williams? I'm a handsome statue. Not, okay, I've never, we've never talked about being, a, I, do, I mean, do you think I'm an attractive man? You're a very handsome man. I'm okay, fine, you're saying. a very handsome stone golem. That actually means a lot to me. Hey, well, I'm sorry I didn't say it before. Well, you might start looking for him or Lazarus, Kingston. Hello, my brother. It's good to see you. Hey, thank you very much, Willie Poker, sometime. Oh, please, we miss you from the game. Come by any time. Be there. Give my best to Victoria and Winston. Of course. Have a good night, Bob. You see, he nods, smiles, <laughs> heads off down the street, and you got a name. Kingston heads out. Um, 
this is going to be uh, uh, our friend Sophia. You okay. head back to Staten Island. Mm -hmm. uh, you're on your way back to, I guess, your family's house. Yeah. Uh, make a perception check for me, if you'd be so kind. Mm -hmm. Not 20. Yeah. <laughs> Lost. Just out of the <laughs> leopard box. Open my box. Uh, you're heading down the street, and before you can even realize it, you bump face to face with Isabella Infierno. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sophia, running into you on the street. How are you doing? So late, and you're by yourself. Well, I was out of town, and you see, she picks up a bag. Uh, it's a bag from David's bridal, and it has a wedding dress in it. I vomit. <laughs> 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 um, <clears throat> you know you can't get married until I even see divorce papers. I haven't even gotten divorce papers yet. Oh? If this is about Dale. We don't need to have a legal wedding. A lot of what we do is really off the books. It's just a party for our friends and family to come and celebrate our love. I tear open the thing to see her wedding dress. Uh, cool. Make a make a an athletics check for me. <laughs> she win with her. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, I got a 22. Uh, you snatch the dress out of her hand. It is the most beautiful gown. I vomit again. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Isabella picks it up and says, oh. Selfie, you're a mess. I wish you the best. And listen, if you really want an invite, I'd be happy to send one your way. I actually would. I just came from a wedding and it was a really beautiful experience. I'm looking to add more to my weekends. <laughs> Assuming you guys can afford getting married on the weekends. Oh. Or are you doing one of those Friday weddings? <laughs> We're doing a destination wedding. Oh yeah? Yeah. Where? We're just gonna... so I know. It says, we're gonna go out all the way to Montauk, have a wedding on the beach, June. Dale hates the beach. Yeah. But I love it, and he loves me. <laughs> Bye, Sophie. You see, she walks off down the Just street. So you know, I would have never guessed that Dale would do to me what he did to me. So this feeling of confidence and love that you have right now, enjoy it while it lasts. She shrugs, moves on. Wow, that's what a nat 20 gets you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sweating at the palms. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, what does Sophie do after that? Sophie had a really specific plan before she ran into <laughs> Isabella and Fierno. Let me see if she can collect herself. Um, I think. Uh, do but, I? I think I'm gonna look at my phone and see. I think I'm gonna. Well. I wanted to contact two people, and then I had this really specific thing. I was coming home being like, you know what? I'm going to finally do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to empty the mailbox. I've been avoiding it because I don't want to see his name written on letters. Stuff is still coming here for him. But, you know, I'm feeling empowered by my new friends, so I'm going to finally do it. I don't know if I can now. Yeah. <laughs> so I might not do that. I am going to... Give me a give me a wisdom say with this advantage. Okay, with this advantage. Okay, I got I did get a nat twenty, but I also got a two. Oh, fuck. so wisdom fuck. save is gonna be a uh, five. Sophie needs a drink. Okay. Oh, no. All right. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the bar. I feel like what I had this really specific plan of what I wanted to do, and I don't know if I can even do it now after that exchange, like role playing wise. So, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go to the bar and I take out my phone trying to do what I was planning on doing. Mm -hmm. um, but then instead, I'm just gonna text Dale. Cool. Uh, you get f***ing lit. Uh, what do you text Dale? I think I just say, um, I hope you get sand between your cheeks at your beach wedding, you And then I delete it, I delete it, I delete it. And then I just say, I wish you the best. Aww. And then I send that. I say, I saw Isabella 
Um, I wish you the best. Um, and then I order um, not... I order a shot, but as they're pouring the shot, mm -hmm. I just take the bottle from them. Uh, you just whoo, grab the bottle. Yeah, you get... Blasted. Um, I had all this responsible detective work I wanted to do. Okay. And now it just feels so false for me to do that. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that's the role playing choice. Never mind. That's the role playing choice. Um, Misty, you arrive back at your lovely penthouse um, and you see a gift there. <gasps> Oh, I love gifts. It's this huge, beautiful silk tarp over some very tall standing, like must be a piece of art or something. I don't even have detect magic. Um, okay, I'll open this present. You whip the silk off and a six foot tall, beautiful standing mirror is here in your apartment. <gasps> oh. I find the perfect place for it in my room. <laughs> you set it up in your bedroom. Uh, go ahead and give me a charisma saving throw. Uh, Fifteen? Fifteen. You are back against the wall. The mirror fills your bedroom with light. You see standing on the other side of the mirror, wreathed in light, is Titania, queen of the fairies. I kneel. It's been such a long time. Oh my God, you look great. Silence! <laughs> All the glassware in your bedroom shatters. Oh, that's fine, I, I can get other glassware. <clears throat> I'm silent, I'm quiet. My name. My name. You would steal glamour meant for me. You would usurp the glory that was intended for your queen. Four hundred years ago, you ran away. And just because you hide in a place of iron and smoke does not mean you can deny your queen! Light tears away. Your, like, clothes rend, and your, like, jewelry kind of, like, falls away for a little bit, and you can feel her trying to rip the shoes off your feet. Um... Can I cover the mirror back up again? Um, yes, make a make an attack roll to Great. try and cover the mirror up. Um, what what is that? Uh, plus. Dex plus proficiency. Uh, nine, 15 plus proficiency is uh, eighteen. You grab the silk, <sighs> uh, hurl it over the mirror. <sighs> the light fades. Um, and you feel uh, one of the bones of your hip break. <gasps> oh. Oh. This stupid body. <laughs> uh, I um, call Kingston. Kingston, uh, on your way back to the subway, you get a, a call from Misty. Oh, I answer it. Kingston, I've 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 had a I've had a bad fall. I've, Kingston, Kingston. You fell? I fell. I, I, my hip, I think I broken my hip. You broke your, okay. Uh, can you, okay, well, can you walk? Or, like, of course you can't walk. I'm on my way. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the doorman to let you in. Great. You rush to Misty's. Uh, you arrive there, set the hip in, and probably this is where you're going to have to crash tonight. Can I spend the night, Misty? Is that Please, all right? use any one of the guest rooms. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, An apartment with multiple guest uh, rooms. Kogrash, you uh, head back to the sewers. Um, uh, what does Kogrash do as he head back to the sewers? Uh, Just sleeping? Yeah, I think he's feeling... I get, what, time, what time is it right now? Uh, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, I think he's kind of had a rough day, and he's going to kind of try to just find a place to think and go to his little uh, hole in the, in the you, tunnels. On your way to the little hole near a subway station, you see a little basket with a bunch of cheese in it, and you see there's a little note on it that says, Wherever you are, Rat Jesus, know that I love you. <laughs> from Wally. <laughs> uh, 
I love why. Kongrash breaks down crying. Oh. Uh, and, um, uh, just, and then, does Wally live nearby? Yeah, Wally lives nearby. I want to go to Wally's house. <laughs> you go to Wally's house. Um, you walk in. Uh, you see it's late at night. Wally's at his kitchen table, a very small little apartment. And you see that he's uh, FaceTiming with his brother. Um, you see he says, um, he goes, David, come on. We, we don't know that, we, that he's gone. He might still be missing. You see that um, the guy in the other end is like a sort of businessman looking guy, sort of like his average wearing like a fleece. He goes, Wally, it's late. Look, dad's on some f- island somewhere. He's never coming back, all right? He's gone. He left us. You see why he says, I don't think he would do that. I, I just, I know it's been a long time. I just don't think he would. He says, look, I gotta go, all right? Take care of yourself, Wally. Come check in anytime. The little FaceTime thing ends. Wally looks up um, and you see he says, well, at least I got the Christmas card. He puts a little Christmas card up on his fridge from David and David's wife and the kids, and it says, Merry Christmas from the Kugriches. Uh, Wally goes, all right, time to go to bed. Gotta brush my teeth, though. <laughs> Starts brushing his teeth. Okay. He's <laughs> on the blanket. I think I'm going to, uh, I think, uh, Kugrash isn't ready to uh, confront Wally right now, but I want to give him a good sign. So I do that like Santa, like that parent Santa thing. I eat the cheese and I leave it out on like a plate. <laughs> and uh, I just write on a note, a uh, rat Jesus loves you. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm watching you. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching. Uh, and, and then I say, in not a creepy way. <laughs> Oh, so heartbreaking. And then Kogresh uh, goes and sleeps in the sewers. Pete. Kogresh. You, you enter the dreaming. Uh, what does Pete do once he enters the dreaming? Uh, he's probably having just some like weird dream that's like similar to life, but mm-hmm. yeah, like he's probably like making a deal. You are making a deal. You're in like a beautiful neighborhood. Uh, you see that there's a cool guy with like a little handlebar mustache. Someone's riding a fixie around. There's cool coffee shops and stuff like that. He's selling some drugs. Um, you see that uh, one of the people turns to look at you and says, oh, hey man, you're Pete the Plug, right? Hmm? You're Pete the Plug, right? Are you gonna hook us up? Yeah, yeah, what do you, uh, what do you guys need? Um, well, we'd love to, I think, like, get out, I think. Totally. Do you have yeah. anything to help us like get out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Uh, I like pull out some mushrooms. I'm like, yeah, this. Are you gonna go like camping or something? Or we've always wanted to go to New York. <laughs> These mandibles extend and start clicking, and you see that all the people around here begin to turn insectoid. They take your mushrooms, start passing them out, and around you, a rip in the dreaming opens, and you see a neighborhood in New York City, and these things begin to fly out. They become surrounded by the Umbral Arcana, and you see that they are headed into real New York City. Thanks, Pete. Storm in. You snap awake uh, as quick as you can on the table. It is morning. Okay. Uh, I find Alejandro. Alejandro's there. <gasps> Peter, what did you see? Okay, uh, okay. I was in, uh, uh, I was probably in like Williamsburg or something, and uh, these people needed, wanted to get out, and I gave them mushrooms, and then they said thank you. They all turned into insects and ripped a hole and left and got out and went into an actual place in New York. You let them out? Yeah, in the dream. I was just Peter, selling. what you do in the dream matters. I, I don't know. I was just doing what I would normally do in the day-to-day. What you would normally do they is... They didn't even give me money. <laughs> you see, he boom, mm-hmm. opens up a window. You see that he's doing a clairvoyance spell onto a neighborhood. You hear screams. Ah! You see this. Oh my God. 
My God. I, 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 you see, he, he says, I must run and find Esther. Get, collect your friends. These people are in danger. What's Pete do? It sends out like a mass text. Do uh, I have you guys' You number? wake up hungover. You wake up in the chantry upstairs. You wake up in, in Missy's apartment. You wake up in the sewers. Uh, there's trouble. You see it's right next to the Steinway subway stop, and uh, you guys all know where to go. Start right. running there. You guys rush to the subway stop uh, in wait, various... Wait, how I can't rush? I've just broken my hip. Uh, your hip has... Uh, Kingston does I some... use magic to <laughs> heal you. <laughs> Is the normal He's not a regular doctor. You guys rush, all nuts. get on the subway. Uh, Kingston, you give a little bit of help getting that subway there extra quick, and you guys rush up out of the subway steps and hear the chittering of strange insects. I'm gonna need everybody here to roll initiative. Roll in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all for this week on The Unsleeping City. Tune in next week and see what's bugging our intrepid heroes. I hate bugs. <laughs> That's it for this chapter of Dimension 20. But wait, what harkens on the wind? <coughs> Speak to me, bird. More full episodes of Dropout.tv's own Dimension 20? Available with a free trial that you could sign up for today? Hopefully our viewers are brave enough to answer the call. There he goes. You see that all of the tears in the Umbral Arcana here are connected as though by strings to their puppet master, Pete. 